Do we have a number two quarterback, Steve Sipple? Chubba Purdy, uh, you know, got some glowing reviews, has taken some steps forward. Do you believe he's the number two quarterback? Well, I'm just reading tea leaves. I mean, if you if you listen to Matt Rule closely, the last two times he's talked about the quarterbacks, he's he's lavished praise on Chubb on Chubba. Not as much Heinrich. He said that Chubba, the last time he talked, which was Tuesday, Matt Rule, he said he said Chubba Purdy has made massive improvement, massive improvement. I, I really wonder what that looks like. I mean, that's, that's what I mean by lavish and praise on, on a quarterback. I just think if you look at what rule has said, the last two, the last two times he's really talked in depth about quarterbacks, what he said about Chubba suggests to me, he must be number two. Well, I'll tell you too. I mean, his brother, what he's doing in the NFL, you wonder how much his brother's helped him. Brock Purdy. I think a lot. I mean, just having access to a starting NFL quarterback for yeah. that plays for Shanahan. Yeah. I mean, oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. And we, as gotta that, help. We, that's probably something we should have asked Chubb, but we haven't. But, you know, you would think just being able to train and speak with his brother and learn from him um, where he's at now and doing what he's doing. It might not be a, a lead question with Chubb because it's, it seems self evident, right? What's he teach you though? What do you, what yeah, do you what learn? Do you, yeah, what, yeah, what do you learn from? Because he was going to those games. It was kind of fun when you he watched was. the playoff run and you'd see Chubba with his parents. Which, right, if my brother was playing in the NFC championship game or yeah. whatever, I'd be there too. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're, and they're, a, I mean, they're going to be a Super Bowl contender. And a lot of it is because of people talk about Brock Purdy. Well, and Shanahan is obviously an elite head coach. So, yeah, I think, I think that I, I mean, it's not – we'll get a depth chart, I think. It sounds I like – I think so. It, it's not for sure. I think we'll get a depth chart the first week of the game. And my guess is just a you – know, I would call I would call an educated guess. You could debate that. But I, my educated guess is it'll be Chubb on the two line. I'll tell you the one nice thing about these transfer portal windows for the non-graduates, you don't have to worry about when you put a depth chart out now that the next day, like, guys are going to transfer because they really can't. Right. I mean, there's these Good por point. portal windows, but I, I go back to like, I'm sure every coach, like Scott Frost's first year, had to make that call with Adrian Martinez and Tristan Jebbia. First year, that's and, right. And he he put Adrian one. He could have just, I mean, they didn't even play the dang Akron game. It didn't even matter in the end. He could have just said that they're going to they're gonna each take a few series, like kind of what Michigan had to do with J.J. McCarthy and, and Cade McNamara. By the way, Cade McNamara, Iowa, watch that injury situation. Really? You know, they run a tight camp there. Um, I was talking to Tom Caker this week at Iowa, and they only get one day of interview access all of August, and then there's a kid's practice the next day where the fans yeah. and the media can go. That's it. Uh, but there's speculation that McNamara could be out for a few weeks. That would, that would really hurt. I saw the injury. I saw it happen. He just all he did was roll to his right. There was open field, and he ran. There was nobody around him, and he fell to the ground. It. I I thought it looked. I don't want to. I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to be overly dramatic. But I I cringed a little bit when I saw it. Like, ooh, that doesn't look good. Why Why did he just go to the ground? Like, if he can't play against Iowa State or something. Or I mean, there, there's some early games that you wonder. They have a good schedule though, Iowa. Yeah. Um. That's something to watch. Iowa State. There's isn't there going to be a lot of a lot of gambling jokes with that game? <laughs> Brought to you by Harris Sportsbook. Uh, yeah, I was in a fix because there's got going to be a lot of people sort of casting a wary eye towards that game, wondering if there's other players like you know there was an Iowa State player who left the team, a lineman last name Lee. I think it's Elijah Lee, Isaiah Lee. Name is Lee. Um, who admitted he gambled on Iowa State games? Several. <laughs> and he picked him to lose at one point. He gambled against Iowa State. He gambled against his own Against team. Texas in a game, right? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. But anyway, yeah. I, well, I it's scary because if, if you did this full audit to the level they're doing on every team, oh. <laughs> I think you'd find a lot. A lot. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. And would. they had reason to, to perform this investigation and so uh, everybody around the country is probably very nervous right now i'm sure i'm sure 
that if that if a district attorney gets a wild hair, they could they could they could get records and see if people are. I mean, what's happened in Iowa is it's because they they're they're gambling under false names, and you can use your or phone. using other people. You can use names. your phone too. Yeah, like in Nebraska, you have to go in in person to bet. You can't use your phone. Okay, and you have to get your money in person. I bet you Trev loves that rule. I mean, that actually is big because I think if Jeff Sims rolled into the casino on <laughs> Highway 77 and Warlick Boulevard, it would draw a little bit of attention. It sure would. <laughs> or it Jeff sure Sims. Would. What, do you, what do you got in the, in the late game, Jeff? <laughs> yeah, you don't. That would be a bad look. That would be a bad look. Yeah, in, in Iowa, they're just doing it on FanDuel on their phone. Yeah. FanDuel. Um, or what's the other one? DraftKings. But it's easy to track because you register and set up a profile. Like when you go up to like the window to bet at a casino, you just say, I, I got a hundred bucks on the Dodgers. Right. And they give you the ticket. That's right. it. Right. They don't say, give me your name, your address. Well, what the kids in Iowa were doing was like, like some were using their parents' names and that's it. That's illegal. That's the problem. It was tampering with records is what they're calling it. So they were, they're gambling through a brother or a or a mom or whoever how would you like to be the interim iowa ad she comes in in this job and she's got to deal with this then this whole brian sparents contract quarterback or quarterback or points per game thing i mean mm -hmm. it, that's a tough job she's walked in oh yeah 